crew uh, transportation to the International Space Station uh, to and from the station is uh, currently provided by the uh, Russian Soyuz spacecraft uh, in which the uh, three crew members arrive uh, on uh, what's known as indirect rotations. Uh, obviously, a uh, program uh, that's underway here on the ground, the commercial crew program officially is three years old. It was last month on April 5th in 2011 that it was designated as a standalone program. On April 21st, Kathy Leaders was selected to be the manager of commercial crew. She had served in the acting role since October, spending a lot of time between the Kennedy Space Center, Johnson Space Center, and home bases for the companies supporting the program through Space Act agreements. Earlier, she stopped by the Public Affairs Console here in Mission Control, and I asked her about her new role as manager and status of the program and also NASA's partnerships with Blue Origin, Boeing, Sierra Nevada, SpaceX, and United Space Alliance. So we are really um, winding up a big um, portion or the purpose of the program. It's our public purpose. It's really about how we've been working with industry to really um, expand and mature their capability to provide crew transportation capabilities. And um, now we're getting ready to move on to the NASA purpose part of the, the program, which is really where we're going to get ready to actually contract for certification of missions. And so all four of those partners, honestly five partners, have been really working hard to um, mature their overall designs and their integrated crew transportation concepts. And then we've continued to work with um, Blue Origin um, as they're maturing kind of their uh, medium class launch vehicle concepts and their RCS systems. And so um, it, it's really those two parts of the program that are, that are pretty critical. And right now we're really getting ready to um, move out onto the NASA portion of the program where we're going to have crew services to the International Space Station. It's, uh, it's probably very obvious, this question, but uh, what are the parallels between cargo and crew that make you a, a perfect fit for this, this job? I was fortunate enough to be able to do cargo. And really the, the, the key parts of cargo were, A, we had to figure out how to really take advantage of the experience that Space Station had with working the different international partner mm -hmm. cargo vehicles as we were moving forward. And then the second thing was really about how we looked at partnerships within the agency to really go accomplish what we need to do for cargo. So the relationships that station had with C-3PO mm -hmm. and with the launch services program are really critical to um, us being able to have the cargo missions that we had to station. And finally, it's, it's really the faith in our industry partners. You know, when we first started cargo, um, there was a lot of people out there that just didn't think that SpaceX and Orbital could get there and look at where we are today, right? And so those three things I think are really critical for us moving into crew. You know, we are um, working at uh, the learning that we get from Orion SLS, even our Soyuz experience on station now. Um, we're reaching out with our partnerships with Orion and SLS and the, obviously the International Space Station program and continuing to kind of build on the relationship that we had with Launch Services Program. And then finally, you know, I know that our partners can get there, right? I've seen it happen. I understand that they're up for this task to deliver crew transportation. Um, obviously, we're, we're wrapping up a, a pretty important phase of the program with uh, the integrated capability part of the mm -hmm. Space Act agreements that we have with the partners. Um, I think certification is is one of the buzzwords out there, yeah. especially with uh, uh, people that watch us very closely, obviously. Talk about the, how the program is, is treating the certification part. I've, I've sort of watched it along, but, but obviously everybody watching us doesn't see what goes on behind the scenes, but certification is a big, big deal. Yeah, it's really where we make sure that the crew transportation that the partners have been working on really meets our requirements, our safety requirements. And so um, it is really where we're going to make the decision about is their capability that they've developed really safe enough to actually fly our crews. And so it's going to be a partnership between us and um, 
our industry partners, and we're going to have to figure out, honestly, how to do it in a way that enables them to kind of run as fast as they need to, to be able to provide the capability within the time frame that we're looking at. But we still have to make sure that they meet our requirements for safety. Mm -hmm. And of course, that leads obviously to the, to the next subject, and that is, what is the timetable? for the next phase, which is the transportation capability part, which I guess is actually the contract phase. We've been operating under Space Act agreements now, which is very unique to commercial crew compared to other programs in NASA, but talk about what, what you can about the timetable for the next selection. So we are, we are working towards um, the scheduled uh, award date of the August timeframe. And, um, and then, then that's obviously a critical time frame because then it's really when the partners can understand that we've made the investment with them to actually go through certification with them. And then ultimately the um, post-certification missions, which are actually crewed services missions to the International Space Station. So um, having that commitment um, understanding that NASA's then um, chosen the partners to be able to then go work these crew missions is going to be critical to them executing on their timetable to provide that capability for us. Well, obviously we're here in the space station mm -hmm. flight control room and uh, you're very familiar with this, yeah. this place and, you know, we're flying astronauts on a on a new spacecraft to and from the station, it's not that far off if you think in terms of NASA and, and building a brand new type of spacecraft. Um, within your team, do you sense a, a growing anticipation and excitement when we as we move down the road here? You know, um, when I first, I tell the story often, because when I first came over from cargo, we were just finished up um, SpaceX 2, and, and I kind of, seeing all the hardware that was at Wallops and all the hardware at the Cape that was lining up and I was really looking forward to the years in front where I was going to be seeing these cargo missions uh, flying. But as I've noticed over this last year that I've been working in the commercial crew program, we have hardware and we have vehicles and we have launch pads and now it's about actually pulling those together and all those pieces together to then go fly. And so I'm positive within a year, year and a half, you're going to start seeing these pieces of these vehicles start showing up at the Cape. And, and as our team starts seeing that and understands what that feels mm -hmm. like, you'll, you'll start getting that excitement again. There's a lot of folks in, in the program that um, came from the shuttle program. And so a little piece of their heart is, is, was kind of taken away when, when the shuttle program retired. And, um, but I'm planning on filling that hole again as we start seeing these missions um, show up, and I'm sure when we start launching our crews again from the Kennedy Space Center. Well, I know <clears throat> I know that we're uh, we're all very excited to see which company or companies um, move forward in developing this brand new U.S. crew transportation. So, uh, Kathy, we really appreciate you stopping by Mission Control and joining mm -hmm. us on Space Station Live. Thanks. Thank you.